Pick some, come on. I'll go feed. Well, I'm going to go feed this to the cows. Come on. Feed. 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 Some more white here. You better get them. I'm actually getting ready to go on a trip. I'll tell you about that um, as soon as I leave. So I'm carrying some extra hay so Grace can actually do the chores without having to lug those um, loads of hay over to the barn. That's probably the most physically demanding part. Trying to get things set up so it's not too crazy while I'm gone. Um, here's something cool. This little fig tree has exploded this year. Yeah, last year it gave us a few, but not a lot. And all the years before that, nothing happened. Nothing at all. I felt like it was a waste until last year. I said, oh, we got some figs. Yay. And this year it is out of control. So there's so many that we're not even able to, we can't even keep up with picking them. And so the yellow jackets are coming in and getting the high ones that are ripe and falling apart. Look at here, there's so many. I've picked as many as I could eat and then sometimes brought as many as like two pounds up the hill in a day. Um, for those of you who don't know figs, or don't remember our little history with this tree, that's amazing. That's amazing. Figs don't really grow here. It's too cold. They're more kind of Mediterranean. Uh, they like really temperate regions. They do well in really pretty dry regions. But here we are. Um, and last winter, I guess, this didn't freeze to the ground, and so it's doing well. Basically, fig trees will survive here, but they often don't fruit very much because the plants will literally, everything above the ground will freeze in the winter, and then it has to grow new shoots. But this year, there were a lot of surviving shoots, which uh, gave the plant a kickstart in the spring because it could pop out leaves and then have more energy to grow new shoots, but also fruit on those old, um, they're not vines, on the old... Um, shoots. So anyway, we have as much um, fruit from this tree as we can eat. More than we can eat, honestly. It's amazing. I'm going to squeeze in between here, too. Mmm. So good, so good. Wow, there's so many that I miss. I picked two. I picked about two pounds about four days ago, and then I haven't picked since then. And there's just the trees covered with rotten ones. You didn't miss any. You just didn't get Yeah, they weren't ripe, and so they uh, so many have ripened. Basically, this tree is still covered with small green fruit, and we will get fruit until it freezes, and then it'll be over. The leaves will fall, and the fruit will all be mush. So we probably got another week or two. Of fresh fruit from our homestead. All right, guys, stay outside till you're not acting crazy, please. I don't know where they get that energy. I mean, I do know where, but it's crazy. Like, I take them down to the farm to do the chores, run around, play, they run around, and play, and then get back up here, and they're still just nine out of ten on energy level, which is great. But it, that just blows my mind. I just received a phone order for two bottles. A little behind on bottles, they're all, most of them. Oh, no, they're not all dirty, we can use these. I just got a second phone call on this same order, and this customer wants this to become a rush order, apparently. Apparently her client really wants the product now. I mean, I don't, what kind of 
I mean, that's gonna affect the price, right? No, the price is still free. <laughs> Okay, sorry. Girl. Hope your client's happy with the product and the delivery time. Here you go. Here's that for him. It's clean. I just used. I just shook her bottle with it. Sorry. I put her bottle in this bottle warmer. Guys, here's the setup. Okay. Is this the demanding client that? Yeah, but his tummy hurts too. So oh. it's like, is it his tummy? Is it? I mean, I think he's hungry. It's time for him to be hungry. <sighs> oh. Slow down a little. Slow down a little. <laughs> he's like, no. Don't make me. Don't make me. <laughs> Brianna's trying to convince me to get a hotel room, like reserve a hotel room for my trip. Do, do they know about your trip? Arthur's going on this trip by himself, and it's gonna be great. But he's so funny, he's trying to be a bachelor. He's like, I'm just gonna bring a sleeping bag and sleep on the side of the road or in a ditch. And I'm like, this is a really long drive. And when you get home, it's not gonna be like, okay, daddy's sleeping, he just had a long trip. It's gonna be like, here's a baby, give it a bottle. Are you telling me I'm not gonna get two days off when I get home? <laughs> to recover from your three days away? So I I have a I have uniquely low standards when it comes to where I sleep and eat. But those it's not all bad because what it comes from is well you can be an adventurer. Yeah, it comes from being raised with a bunch of other kids and you just like do what you need to do, travel on your not sleep in a tent, sleep in a car. But it also comes from camping a ton. Yeah. Where it's like I know like I can be comfortable and get good rest if I have a sleeping bag and I'm not wet. I mean, here's a quick story. My sister and I went to, um, we went to Scotland on a trip. And this was an ultra budget trip. I don't remember exactly how much we spent, but we did not have much money. And we didn't even want to spend the money we had on the trip. So we flew, I flew into um, London, and my flight was different from hers, I can't remember why, but I flew into London, roamed to London for a day, bought a little bit of food, so here was my plan for the night. Are you ready? Do you remember this? Go Instead ahead. of getting a hostel or a hotel, I just got a, uh, a train ticket and took it all the way to the end of the line, as far out as it would go, outside London. I got off the train. I didn't even know what town I was in. And I walked about half a mile till I found a patch of woods. Then I walked into the woods and laid down and went to sleep. <laughs> And then in the morning, I got up, and I felt great. I wandered around. I had no idea where I was. Wandered through just, you know, like, ruins and stuff. That's got cool. Got back to the train station, rode back into London, and for about $10, I had a great night's sleep. And I, and I was safe because I was way outside of town. And then we went up to Scotland. Is this getting too long? We went to Scotland, and we stayed in some hostels, but we were actually too cheap to stay in hostels every night. So... <clears throat> We, one night, we were in Inverness, Scotland, and we just looked up at this hill outside of town. We said, I bet we can camp up there. And in Scotland, you can actually camp anywhere legally, as long as you're not right by someone's house on farmland, open land. Um, it was laws to accommodate travelers or gypsies. It's getting too long. Stop so, saying that, just tell a good story. we walked up the hill into the woods, found a little spot under some trees, set up our tarp. And then my sister got sick. <laughs> So we proceeded to spend like the next three days there, basically making tea on our little stove, drinking tea, reading books, and laying under our tarp in the rain. My sister decided she was going to get a hostel. She like she was. She wanted a good drive. She, yeah, she was like, I'm going to sleep inside. <clears throat> so actually, we both went in for one night, and um, we slept in the common room in the hostel because we were too cheap to get our private room. So we were sleeping in this common room where everyone has their sleeping bags and pads on the floor. And about two in the morning, um, these guys, I'm pretty sure they were from Poland, no offense, but I'm pretty sure they were from Poland, came in, they'd been partying, smashed drunk. And um, they'd been drinking alcohol. And one of them came in incoherent, 
zipped down his fly <gasps> and just peed on the floor right next to us. Just peeing no. and peeing and peeing. Just this big puddle of pee. And everyone just kind of scooted up. They were just like falling and stumbling over themselves. Finally, he went to sleep. That was a big disturbance in our sleep. Who cleaned the pee up? I have no idea. It wasn't me. Um, it wasn't on me. It was very close to me, though. <laughs> <laughs> and he had no idea what he had done. So What y'all don't know about us is before we were even met each other, we were both world travelers and adventurers. The next. I wasn't quite as hardcore <laughs> as Arthur. I would get hostels. But I've slept on many a Greyhound bus. I've slept in many an interesting random place that would probably scare me to death if I knew my daughter had done that. And yeah. Our first night in Inverness, if I remember correctly, we got into town. We didn't want to get a hotel. <laughs> so we just walked outside the town. We found this big police department with a huge wall around it. So we walked behind the police department and laid down next to this ditch and went to sleep. And all night long the police cars were coming in and out. You know the difference, out, the difference between me and you is that I'm a girl and you're a boy. That's right. The last, now my sister, anyway. Your sister was with you though. But she's an adventurer. Yes. So the last. But I'm just saying that I was an adventurer too, but there were certain things I would not do because I was always traveling alone. I was a lone adventurer. I would meet friends on the way, but I did my traveling by myself. One of our last nights in Inverness, my sister said, I wanted to take a shower and go to a hostel. So we went to her hostel. She checked in. We went out. I think we ate and went to a session. She brought her fiddle and played music. And then we went back to the hostel. She went in and checked and went back in to sleep. And I literally just looked left and looked right and crawled under a bush. <laughs> Oh, because she was the only one that got the hostel. Well, I didn't. I didn't want to spend the money. So I just crawled under a bush, slipped into my sleeping bag, and went to sleep under the bushes. Anyway. I bet you never thought you'd have your own personal refrigerator in your bedroom. Let's look at that. <laughs> Anyways, are there... Okay, go ahead, and then I'll talk about your trip. Bottle warmer, another bottle warmer in the bathroom. I got one of those outlet things that has more than one outlet on it. So uh -huh. we can actually put everything over there now. That's great. So, Or we could put them by our beds, which is we each have a bottle warmer by our bed. What makes you think you deserve to have a fridge in your room and a bottle warmer? When we've never had anything like that before. Oh, because of bottle. Because of bottles. Because of bottles. But twins. If we just had one, we might not be able to. I would not walk downstairs, make a bottle, walk back up here three times a night. And just for your, for your reference, folks, we're talking about. Um, six bottles a night. Yeah, we're talking about midnight, three, and then like five or six in the morning. We're up prepping bottles, warming bottles, feeding bottles. Well, actually, bottles. my new system is I have each day we make all the bottles for 24 hours and we stick them in that fridge. And then we're done. Yeah. And we That's haven't great. done that yet. Thus, the demanding calls from my customer and their demanding client. Someone's behind on their job. Actually, I did it yesterday, but... Um, good job. But I forgot I had breast milk sitting right here that I just pumped. And if you're wondering why we're feeding bottles, it's because they don't like to nurse very much. <laughs> I mean, they like it, but they aren't very efficient at it. And therefore, you know, oh, good job. Oh, good job. That's why you've been crying. Get it out. They're not very efficient at it yet. So, um, <laughs> you look. Did you see that? <laughs> I saw that pretty smile. He's like, <laughs> fart smile. Full tummy, all the gas out, talking about the milkies. Well, bottles are their escape plan from the NICU. If if every if every baby nursed its way out of the NICU, it would take weeks more potentially. I don't know. I think if they introduced breastfeeding first, that's the, the moms, theory anyway. For the moms yeah. that really want to breastfeed, it would be a different story. But well, instead, my babies were given bottles, even though I had said over and over and over and over and over, I want to breastfeed. Do I understand that they needed bottles? to get out of the NICU, yes, because I can't always be there, so of course they need to take a bottle. Mm -hmm. But in the beginning, they were being 100% fed by an NG tube. Yeah. It would have been perfectly reasonable 
to let them learn to nurse before, or at least, yeah, let them learn yeah. to nurse first. What I completely agree on and is... And the thing is, is that every time I brought that up, I was scared into saying, okay, just give them a bottle. Oh! oh. That's Good what we were looking word. for. That's what we were looking for. So I know it sounds like I'm bitter because I am a little bit. Um, because nursing isn't going well. And I feel like the babies and I both could really benefit from breastfeeding. Yeah. We could really use it, couldn't we? Yeah. <laughs> and I know people say fed is best. And of course, fed, of course, a fed baby is the best thing. But if your baby's being fed, I don't think it's the best thing. Like, does that make sense? Yes, it is. I, I personally want to breastfeed my babies, and I do not feel like that was supported at all in the NICU. And I do believe now that I'm not afraid all the time that it easily could have been. Fine. Yeah. So I, I get it. Like, Joyful literally couldn't be breastfed for a while, and I had to supplement, and that's fine. I don't have a hard time supplementing at all. I have yeah. no shame in it. I don't feel bad about it. It doesn't make me sad. But it's not supplementing when all they'll take is a bottle. And that kills me. It breaks my heart. It's not about anybody else in the world. It kills me. And I feel like especially these little Nikki babies oh. that missed out on so much bonding and so much goodness being in the womb and the way that they were born yeah. need to breastfeed. And I'm I, but I'm not sure, like, honestly, it would take, it. I don't know how to, because right now I'm having to pump feed bottles and try to nurse. And in the meantime, my other children who haven't really had a mom for three months need me. And so it may just be that in the end I give up. And that's what I'm considering. I'm considering just saying never mind and just bottle feeding and um, not even pumping anymore. And the reason for that, though it would literally kill me, and I don't mean shame, I don't mean because I think I should do it, I mean because I so badly want it. But I also so badly need to be able to give my other five kids what they need. So I'm struggling with that. I'm just thinking about it. I haven't made any decisions yet. Oh, what's wrong? My kids have been without me for three months and all, I, and all I'm doing is feeding babies. And the thing is, is that's okay whenever you have a baby, like normally, because you would do that for six weeks or three months. And it would be okay for a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. But for this to go on another three or six months, when our kids, I feel like have already, yes, you can have that. When I feel like our kids have already been without me and us for so long, because my pregnancy, I was really sick in the beginning. Then we had a really good summer, so that's good. I was super pouring into them through the summer. But then as soon as this happened, like, it's literally been laying in mom's bed and watching a movie. You know, that's all I've pretty much done with them is, like, snuggle and watch movies and read some books here and there. And so I don't feel like I get a postpartum time. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I need to make peace with that. I know I can make the choice. I know I have the choice. I can say, you know what? Breastfeeding is more important to me than anything. So I'm gonna just sacrifice everything to do it. But the problem with that is I'm sacrificing my relationship with my children that has been, we have a good relationship, but they need their mom. Yeah. They need me. And the reason I say that is because there's no structure in their lives right now. We've hardly started school, which is fine, but we need to start. You know, we there's no structure to our day. There's no rhythm, there's no, and they need it. They're not thriving. I mean, they're being well-fed and clothed and housed, but they need structure and rhythm and routine. And I can't do that. I can't do that doing this. Mm -hmm. So I just have to make a decision. And either decision is wrong. That's how this whole thing has been. There's never been a decision in this whole journey that's been like, this is the right decision. Every decision has come with a huge cost. Mm -hmm. 
You know, every time you leave the house and go to the hospital. Yeah. Every time. Every time you stay late at the hospital to make sure the babies are doing okay. Every time you come home from the hospital early to see your kids. Yeah. I feel like everything was, um, you were losing something every time you made a decision to do something. I don't know. I guess I thought that part of it would end when we get home. And mostly it has. I mean, mostly it definitely has. Mm -hmm. But, and this one thing that is so important to me. But I don't see how to continue. I don't see how to continue. I feel like my kids really, really need me. And I'm not saying they don't need you, but there's something I bring yeah, that there's is a lot incredibly you unique. And it's not all about mothering, but it's just organization. Extremely practical. Structure. Yeah. But I don't really excel in. I don't want you guys to think I'm not super thankful my babies are home. This is a whole separate. We're talking about something else. <laughs> yeah. We're not talking about joy for healthy, happy babies. Well, what we pretty much do every day is just lay here and look at them and say, this is amazing. They're wonderful. Look at them. They're yeah. the most amazing things in the And we world. have a different helpers throughout the day. And kids. Yeah. come up and hold them and kiss them. And, and help get me them. bottles and warm up bottles Smart. for me. <laughs> or grab me a diaper or whatever. So it's great. And then sometimes we were just like yesterday, we just, I was having a rough day with trying to nurse and. And I was just really sad, and so everyone just piled into this bed, and we watched like this cool show about florists making these huge sculptures out of flowers. It was fun. <clears throat> I think we watched the whole season. I don't think I've ever done that in my life, or my kids definitely watched a whole season of a show. I mean, it was eight episodes, but it was six episodes. It was a love TV, but we had a great time. You all have fun. Yeah, the boys didn't. The girls watched the whole thing. Anyways, so I'm just really struggling with this, um, seeing this great need for my children to have me solidly back in their life, and then knowing that my babies will be fed whether I pump and try to nurse or not. But knowing breast milk is the best thing, especially going into winter with preemies. Okay. The babies spend a lot of their time upstairs, but they do come down and join us down here. And I'm going to play Mr. Royal in this. I'm going to put their heads in the middle. Okay. Together. Mr. Royal in this old crib is extremely solid and safe and has been made so it doesn't rock easily so that a three year old can't come and <laughs> swing them. Um, so they're going to hang out with us down here. You got a new view, huh, mister? Hey, Royal. It's a nice view. Nice smile. Where'd you get that? Downstairs. That's a really nice sword. Are you going to go use it? <laughs> Go slay some dragons. Here she comes with her alarm. All right, I got Miss Truly here and have her monitor, her oxygen monitor. But what you'll notice if you look closely, is she's not wearing her oxygen because we're in the process of weaning her. That's not a low oxygen alarm. That's a I'm not picking up alarm. Um, we're in the process of weaning her. It says 99%. That's about as high as you can go. Um, she's in the process of coming off her auction. So she saw, um, the lung doctor the other day and he said, we'll start taking her off in the daytime and just watching her numbers to see how she does. So that's the first step. We'll do that for about a week. And if she does really good off her auction in the daytime for a week, then we'll take it off overnight as well and see. And then we'll see him in a couple weeks and kind of just touch base. But so far today, she's done really well off of it. All right, put them together. I want to see him in the crib. All right. This is their first time in the crib. Or the cradle. It's a cradle. So this cradle was a cradle that my great great uncle made for my oldest brother when my mom was pregnant with him. And then each of my brothers and myself used. Oh, someone's talking to us. 
So now my babies are in it. Cute babies. What do you think? It's hard to open your eyes in the sunshine, isn't it? I need like a shoulder strap for this thing. It does need a strap. This is the longest she's been off oxygen. She's done really well today. I had, I've had her back on. All oh, you did. Yeah. Was she desatting or just no, you didn't just, want to worry about it? I didn't. I wanted her to eat well, so I didn't want her to be tired. But she was still off for five or six hours, wasn't she? I don't know how long it was, but she never desatted one time. Good girl. She um. So I knew she was about to eat. Probably about an hour before I knew she was gonna eat. I put her back on. It can make her tired sometimes. Yeah. To have to not have the oxygen. I wanted her to eat good. You checking out the outdoors, the great outdoors out here? Look at those eyelashes. They're like half an inch long. We keep her stickers on so that we don't take them off and put them back on, take them off and put them back on because... Yeah, all you have to do is lift this up and it's super, super sticky. You put the thing there and then you lift it back down so it doesn't hurt her. Removing it over and over is just really it's hard not... on your skin. Yes. Especially that sweet little baby skin. So she's coming to see the day. Mommy too. Mommy has not been outside. I'm about to go on a walk to the pond without you. Without Sorry. You. I'd take her if it wasn't for this thing. But it'll be good. It'll be good to not take her. 